Hi, I'm Tony Moore. Welcome to Zombie Country. I grew up in a small town, uh, Cynthiana, Kentucky. I grew up on a dairy farm out in the middle of nowhere. As a young kid, I, I was reading comics when the Image Comics boom started, and it was a perfect time for a 12-year-old kid to, to have his little monkey mind lit ablaze by other people's art. And uh, ever since I was that age, I knew I was gonna draw comics, and that's pretty much what I've done. I'd say as a kid, uh, my biggest influences were probably the things that I shouldn't have been allowed to watch. Um, I was a huge fan of RoboCop and Freddy Krueger and uh, Rambo, all those kinds of movies that uh, a responsible parent probably wouldn't let their kid watch. But uh, I, I had a healthy diet of slasher films uh, before I was even out of elementary school. I read a lot of old horror books, uh, a lot of those overtly salacious uh, 70s and uh, 60s reprints. Those were probably some of the most profoundly influencing uh, things, especially as far as reading goes. They're the type of books that, that got parents in a tizzy in the first place about, uh, about the horror comics. And uh, I was pretty fixated on a handful of those. I think the main reason I, I draw comics is because I like to tell stories. I enjoy a narrative and, and part of the most creatively fulfilling part of comics is, is getting to tell a story, you know. Walking Dead's genesis is uh, pretty deep rooted between me and Robert. We were in seventh grade history class together. Um, I think the teacher knew that we were nerds of a similar feather and she, uh, she sat us next to each other figuring we would hit it off. We had grown up sleeping over at each other's houses and that type of stuff. Um, and when we were kids, that's what we would do. Uh, we'd go to the video store every weekend, rent a couple horrible, crappy movies based on whatever salacious poster art was on the, on the front cover, and uh, go home and, and, and have a little mini marathon. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we definitely uh, had a soft spot for zombie movies. Uh, I remember the first time we rented Dead Alive uh, we sat up all night eating, eating watermelon, uh, which seemed appropriate, and, uh, and, and, and watching the, the biggest splatter fest I'd ever seen on the screen. And then as time went on, um, you know, we, we worked on Battle Pope together. Um, that was our first book when we were like 19, we started doing that. And uh, we worked on Battle Pope for several years and Brit after that at Image. And whenever we'd take a break from, from drawing comics, we did the same thing we did when we were kids. We'd go into the living room, sit down, and pop in a new zombie movie and, and check it out. Um, and so by the time we had gotten to that point, we'd pretty much been versed in the entire uh, history of movie zombies. And we thought, we should make a book that's like the movies that we watch, you know, it's what we love. And Robert came up with the, uh, the hook of the zombie movie that never ends. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what happens at the end of the zombie movie and keeps going. From there, we kicked it off. Uh, it had actually started off as a, as a pitch for a, uh, just a Night of the Living Dead kind of original series. It was set in 1968 and everything. So there's actually a pitch out there that has Rick and Lori and, and everything in, the, in 1968 sitting and watching the, the newscaster on their old uh, Crosby TV set. The publisher figured uh, there's no discernible characters from this. Why not just bring it into the modern day? pitch it as a new thing and you don't have to worry about the rights being, you know, belonging to anybody else. And so that's what we did and, uh, and, and that's, that's how The Walking Dead came to be. To see the work that I did in the comic brought to life like so faithfully was really surreal. I mean there were so many scenes, uh, like the first time I saw the Bicycle Girl zombie uh, just the first still shot of her released on the internet. I totally got goosebumps because, I mean, Nick Otero and his crew uh, created her so faithfully to the artwork that I had done in the book. I mean, the same damage on her body and, and everything, and, and just to see it brought to life, uh, like so vividly, uh, it was really wild. Uh, there's no, there aren't really words to describe how strange it is to see an image like that brought out of your head. You know, to put it onto paper is one thing. It's kind of, um, you know, to, to get it out of your body into a, a, a form that, you know, can share with other people. Uh, but to see it brought 
to that next level was really insane. I was on the phone with Jack Davis when I was working on Fear Agent, and he said, uh, I'm 82 years old, and I just want to have fun. And I thought, that's it, that's comics right there. You don't get to be 82 years old and working in comics unless you just want to have fun. And that made a huge impression on me. It was you know, something so simple, but at the same time, like uh, I was in kind of a weird spot where like I was trying to fight my natural inclinations to be a cartoonist. Uh, I was trying to choke my style out and make it more realistic. And, uh, and it wasn't as much fun. And, and I realized, you know, I just need to own it. Just jump in and, you know, if it's something that I feel like I can really, you know, like be myself on and, and play to my strengths and, you know, have a lot of fun with, then, then that's the project for me. I've got a lot of ideas that I'm composting in notebooks that hopefully before too long, I'll, I'll have books that I, that I wrote, drew, um, you know, if time permits, I'd like to even color them and maybe even letter them myself. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of where the same voice carries it, you know, through start to finish. I think every comic creator uh, has some sort of thing in the back of their minds where they would love to be able to step into the same arena as like Frank Miller. Um, and, and guys that, that, that see it through from beginning to end and just to have that kind of singular vision. Uh, I think every creator probably has that in the back of their mind that that's something they'd like to do. And, um, and I've got a notebook full of, full of things that I'm planning to do before too long. I guess my key advice for surviving the zombie apocalypse is seek the high ground. You wanna see them coming. But at the same time, make sure you leave yourself an out. If they've gotten too close, it could be too late, and you gotta be able to split and run. If they're this close, it's probably already over. Yeah. So everyone got their zombies? Yeah, we wreck up. Who's going to the count? You? I don't know. How you wanna do it? Like three, two, one, shoot? Yeah, let's do it. Three, two, one, shoot. Oh, I got it. I had a fucking safe table. <laughs> <laughs> right, again. Let's do one more with three, two, one, shoot, and then Jerry went to kind of randomly start firing. Hey, you got your uh, stump there, dude. Yeah. No, he did it. <laughs> I got it. I, I, I still shot that dude, though. Ready? I, got, I see it cracked. Three, two, one, shoot. <laughs> Bro, I got the guy in the back. That's oh. huge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.